Hello everyone, welcome to a brand new series here on Moorside and this series is our exploring our locomotives in and rolling stock in the USA. We're going to kick this series off with a new locomotive I bought over there and that is this one right here and it is the Backman K4 462 steam locomotives with DCC sound value lined out in what they call as pre-war Brunswick green stroke black not quite sure what they mean by the green I would say gold but let's get this unboxed on the track and have a look one thing to say just before I put it on the track this is what you get in terms of paperwork inside your quick start guide for Backman DCC sound locomotives fitted with sound technology by Soundtracks. Now when you open it up, stapled down the middle, it's designed essentially, once you get it unfolded, to be a nice thin leaflet like this. So we open up to the first page, just gives you a quick overview, quick start guide, pretty much basic intro introduction into DCC. And it gives you all the various details on Throttle features, decoder features, specifications, um, lighting specifications, steam effects, and it says three, well, steam effects, three selectable whistles or air horns, varies with model, steam exhaust chuff, short whistle, bell, air pump, steam release, brackets hit, and a blower. Now, if we go over here, it tells us what functions we have on this locomotive, and you only get eight. The corner of this. I'm gonna have to have a further explore on one of my controllers. But um we've got a headlight with F0, which is standard, F1 you got the bell, F2 the whistle, F3 short whistle. Um I couldn't get that to work in USA. F4 steam release, F5 nothing, F6 smoke if the locomotive is smoke equipped. F7 dimmer, F8 mute. Um, it's also set up for running on DC layouts. Let's just put it on and off you go. Um, that's your basic information. And as standard, like with all British models, you get your warranty, which including that is an exploded diagram of the locomotive but that bit of paperwork is huge. So let's get this on the track and have a look. So here we are. As you can see, she's lined out beautifully in this Pennsylvania black livery with gold lining, gold spokes on the wheels, gold trim on the pony trucks. Looks absolutely brilliant. That's what caught my eye originally when I first saw it seen it and I thought well I've got to have it so let's just grab it out the box here put that box to one side you get a little packet of spare couplers depending on what sort you would like to use as if in, over in the USA they have a slightly different range of couplers than what we do different forms of putting the couplers on as well and there we are on she goes where's my switch there we go so let her spin on there as she spins around we can see some of the details so start on the back we can see the back of the tender here it's lined out in the lovely gold with the locomotive number on the back we have the Magnetic coupler there, all the water filler detail, ladders, fantastic river detail, continue along the tender to the point where you can see where the coal load is. The only change I could possibly make to this locomotive, replace the fake coal load with a real coal load. I've never liked plastic coal loads that don't look quite right to me. Um, but the tender general is absolutely fantastic detail you might just pick it out in the light the fine detail in with all the rivets there 
we have detailing in the calf but unlike some of the newer stuff on Graham Farish it's not painted out details but we do have the cab windows painted out in red there numbers painted in lovely gold go along the side of the boiler we have again all the usual fantastic rivet detail all the brass work picked out nicely we have a nice little brass bell on the top um, we can see all the various different pipes and fittings that you would find on these American locomotives I will start now, I am no expert on American steam locomotives so I have no idea what all the different parts are on them they're very much different to what we have over here they essentially take a British steam locomotive and add a bit more so, but we can still see, see we've got the works plate on the side here pipe work going down the side along to the front we have the headlamp cow catcher a front magnetic coupler all the details you can find you could probably look at this for quite a long time and see an awful lot of details on it now I also stated before it was DCC sound equipped now this cost me two hundred dollars in the USA works at about 170 180 pounds at a mad somewhere around there I believe which for that I think is phenomenal value for DCC sound locomotive and I believe this is only just newly released uh, by Backman USA and I have had a chance to play with it not over here however I got to have a play with it while I was in the USA as while I was over there I got the opportunity to go and spend a few nights with Orlando N-Track Club and on the last day before I left there were it was the National Train Show in Orlando, held by the National Model Railroad Association. And Orlando had their big layout there. So when I picked this locomotive up, a new friend of mine over there, Cody, from the club, he asked if I would like to have a go with it. Quickly followed by asking if he can have a little play with it. And so we set it away on a little excursion train with some coaches which you'll see in one of our other videos Disney style excursion coaches before she goes off on a freight train I will explain what I think about the sound after we show you some clips so here she is running around the Orlando N-Track Exhibition Club layout
the drivers or the boat on there? Give it to that house. Give it to that house. He still has it, I think. Oh. So, there we have seen this fantastic locomotive running around the Orlando circuit. Um, what do I think of the sound? Sounds absolutely brilliant, I think. Um, it could do with the dynamic braking on it, so that as you slow down it doesn't just keep chuffing. It actually slows down, clanks and it's a bit more realistic, but in general the chuffs and chuffing sounds are, I think, really quite good. The whistle when I first heard it, I turned around and said, what on earth is that whistle? It sounded feeble for an American locomotive. And then I was told that they were the sort of whistles that were given to these style of passenger locomotives. The more commonly heard deep chime whistle, as which you hear on the likes of the Challengers, etc., were given to freight locomotives. Um, I know which whistle I prefer, and it's not the one on this. I prefer that chime whistle. This one just sounds feeble. Um, but we have to make do with it. I still absolutely love this locomotive. Um, and it, because of its size, I think it will be seen quite regularly on Moorside. Um, perfect size. So we'll see what that looks like once we get it on some of our British stock. Um, I might be tempted into another one in a different livery, or I might get one in the same livery and renumber it. Who knows? But for that, for two hundred dollars, I think it's an utter bargain. Um, I get quite envious with my friends in the USA when they can get things like this for that price, and when it looks as good as that, I'm pretty envious. So I'm very happy I picked one up. I just need some specific coaches to go behind it. That will come. But I can't think of much more to say about this locomotive. Um, apart from, I can't stop staring at it. It is absolutely stunning. It really is. I love the gold trims, the gold spokes on the wheels. It just makes it look like an elegant locomotive. Um, what do you guys think? If any further comments or suggestions, leave a comment below. Uh, subscribe. For more, watch our other videos, give us a like, and if there's anything particular you would like to say in our new American series, we have a few things lined up. If there's anything you would like to see, again, leave a comment below, and we'll see what we can sort out. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Bye for now.